Okay, here we are. Uh, okay, so we're two minutes or are we starting? Can start. So hi everybody, hi everybody. Marhaba, shalom, hello everybody. Uh, welcome here to our uh, uh, virtual exchange meeting. This is uh, part of the soft skills course as part of IMPACT, an international uh, collaboration between Israel, Morocco, and many European countries, other European countries. Um, on soft skills and digital skills. So most of the audience here are students. There are some academics and I'm, I'm so glad to see you and meet you today. What we're going to, to have uh, today, lots of interaction based on the feedback that you some of you gave last time. So once again, okay, so here it is. Um, Okay, so this is about, okay, my name is Samia Zaid. I'm a lecturer, the head of the English unit at the Western Galilee College. I'm part of IMPACT, and I'm a teaching a teacher uh, that is part of this program uh, of this course. I'm going to be talking about intercultural competence and personalized learning. Okay. Learning outcomes, this is what uh, th these are the expected learning outcomes. Uh, during after this session, you will be able to, you will gain better understanding of intercultural competence. You will master reflection strategies for effective and appropriate cross-cultural interactions, and you will learn how to manage intercultural learning. So these are the three broad uh, objectives. Okay, outline. I'm going to start with definition of terms. We're going ha to have three activities. Activity number one, what group do you belong to? Who do you belong with? Then I'm going to talk about circles of affiliation. Affiliation meaning belonging. Then we will have another activity, culture in a box, where you were expected to bring something or share a photo or picture. Uh, or an object that reflects something about your culture. Activity number three is on reflecting on critical scenarios. Okay, one second. One second. Um, activity number four will be made available on Moodle website, the course Moodle website for students to complete by next week. And then we'll draw conclusions. Now, I'm going to, so you will be mainly, as students and academics, you will be involved in three activities. I'm going to be running the rest of the session, um, uh, but, and, but you can ask your questions, uh, and you can interrupt me and ask me or others questions whenever needed. I'm going to start with definition of terms, intercultural competence. We started with this topic last time. Intercultural means between cultures, are made of groups that have unique traditions, beliefs, values, norms, meanings, and symbols. Culture is a framework in which we communicate. So there is a lot of communication interaction within a culture. Competence means the capability, aptitude, the know-how or proficiency of working with other uh, proficiency in general. Intercultural competence refers to proficiency in relation to other cultures, different cultures, how to manage interaction between different, different cultures. Okay, the other half of the, to uh, the topic of this uh, meeting is personalized learning. Personalized learning is a, like, um, a new trend, relatively, about adapting learning to the student needs. The idea of adapting instruction and learning to students' individual needs and provide unique learning experience for each student. Personalized learning 
like whoever adapts personalized learning recognizes individual differences and the need to cater for the different interests and needs of different students. It seeks to offer learning uh, opportunities and experiences to manage and self-regulate your own learning. So we're gonna, this is the purpose of the, the, the session. We're gonna learn how to harness artificial intelligence, uh, intelligence, use it in order to improve, to reflect and improve your learning and communication. We're going to, to learn how to become intellectual competent. Okay. Activity number one. For activity number one, I'm going to uh, stop sharing the slide soon. You, I want us to think about, each one of us, to think about who, what group you belong to or who do you belong with? Because when you are part of a group, so you be belong with others to the same group. I want to stop sharing the screen, but I want to, uh, but I want to explain what this activity is. I want you all to turn off your video and leave your microphones open. Okay. The first step is close your windows, turn off your video, and leave your microphone open. Then each one of you, I want volunteers to call out group characteristic. Like you say who you are, what group do you belong to? Now, after, and when you say this, you turn on your camera, you open your window. After that, Whoever identifies with you, whoever belongs to the same group, um, will turn on their cameras. Do you have questions about this? Can you give an example about that? Yes, I will. I will. So I'm going to stop sharing. And I want you all to turn off your cameras, okay? Including myself. Keep your uh, microphone on because you're gonna to speak, okay? Joe, can you please turn off your camera, close your window? Okay, thank you. Close your windows, okay. Now the screen is black, now, I'm going to start, I'm going to give an example. I think about the group that I think belong to. And when I say this, I will turn on the, sc the camera. I will open the window. Then whoever thinks, whoever thinks that they belong to the same group will turn on their camera. So I'm giving you an example. I am, a mother. So I just turned on my camera. If you are a mother, then please turn on your camera. Open your window. Susan, you are a mother. Vered is a mother. We're only three. We're three. We're unique. Let's put it this way. Okay, Rhonda, you're a mother. Okay, now close your windows, please. Who wants to volunteer? Verit, can you uh, close your window? Okay, I want another one to say, which group do they belong to? And open the camera. Can I say? Uh, yes, Sally. Um, I work out at the gym. You uh, okay? Identify a group. I'm um, I'm 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 athletic. Let's say. Okay, I'm athletic. Whoever is athletic will turn on their camera. <laughs> Everybody is athletic. Yeah, most of the young uh, exactly. students here. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. I'm not part of this group. Should I say sorry? I don't know. We'll talk about it. 
Okay, Rwanda, good. Okay, turn off your cameras now. Close your windows. Okay, another one. Let's take another one. We are from Pulst. You are from? Pulst. Okay. We are Pulsers. Okay, whoever belongs to this group, please turn on your camera. Wow. So there are one, two, three, four. Wow. Thank you. Close your windows. I'll take another one or two. Aviv, Aviv? I'm a woman. I am a woman. Wow. This is really large group. Okay. Okay, good. So you're uh, the majority here, I guess. Close your windows. Thank you, Aviv. My I have curly hair. Uh, ah, Tamar. Tamar, you have a Tamar has a curly hair. Okay. Who has a curly hair? Okay, I, <laughs> I don't believe okay. you. Okay, so you're not alone. There are people like you. Let's take the last one now. I okay. wear glasses. Who do you belong to? Who do you belong with? I wear glasses. I don't know how I'm a glasses girl. People with glasses. Okay, it's me. Who else? Okay, so you're not alone. You're not alone, Rafa. Okay, back to the... Okay, now turn on your uh, cam uh, cameras. We're part of soft skills course. So we all belong to this group. Okay, we're learner. We're learning soft skills. We're experimenting with soft skills. So we are a majority here. That's why we are here. Okay, let me share the screen and... Uh, Uh, move to the next active reflection. This is the correction. What were your feelings about being part of a large group? What happened when you felt that you were part of a small group? What did you learn about diversity? Inclusion, part of a group. Exclusion, like you're outsider, you don't belong. How could this affect your interaction with others? Do you want to say something about this? Okay, one, at least one or two. Saleh, how did it make you feel? That there are people... Uh, uh, no, ask the question again. Yeah, I think somebody raised uh, her hand. Stanis, uh, long? Yeah, yeah, it's me. It's you. Yeah. Uh, well, being a part of a group feels just really nice. I would say uh, it's 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 really nice and encouraging to hear that that other people are basically just like us. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Saleh. Uh, it's comforting somehow, you know, to be to see yeah to see someone who likes the thing you like or in the same group that you are. Okay. So think about that. Think about how would you feel if you were part by, or if you felt that um, you don't uh, belong. Okay, just think about it. I'm just uh, sharing ideas here. Um, think about groups give us a sense of shared identity. Right? We, we feel that we have things in common. And there's another uh, uh, quote here from uh, Barack Obama. Uh, when we feel that we are part of the group, then we look for common grounds, something that we have in common, something similar. So when you were others, sometimes people try to uh, look for a comfort zone for something that, that will make them them feel more at ease and that is when they 
uh, manage to find things in common. Okay? Now, we don't belong only to any group, right? Sometimes, one second, we belong to different groups. Or sometimes in intercultural communication, we face, we live near another group. In fact, sometimes we are in a society where different groups are separated. Sometimes groups overlap. So there are some common things and there are things that are different. And sometimes we have one group within the other. Okay? Uh, so, so, so this is something we, we all think about. Like, where do we belong and what do we have in, in common? And when we, cannot, we, we don't have things in common with other groups. I want to share my story about crossing borders and being in different, having different affiliations. So as a kid, I lived in a village and I was raised in the same culture, same tradition, same, same norms. But in high school, like when I came at the age of, uh, let's say in 15, I moved outside of, of the village and I got, I started to study from people from different religions. And after high school, I went to a university and I started to have the experience of studying from students, international students and students who lived in, in other areas of Israel. Like, um, and um, I got to know, to work and study with people who spoke different languages. At some point I decided to study abroad so I got to meet students from abroad and uh, was exposed to different cultures and norms. Within these circles of affiliation, I, I went, one of them was studying in Cambridge um, and meeting the British. And I was wondering all the time whether the British have spoiled my manners. Because when I came back to my own culture, to my small culture, the village, and the nuclear family, and even to the extended family, I it seemed that I adapted some of the norms that existed in these other cultures. For example, I want to give an example. It's not typical in my culture, if you have a guest at home, to ask them, can I get you something? <laughs> okay, so you get them yeah, whatever yeah. they, Okay, you don't say, can I get you something? Can I, can I get you a cup of coffee? You just offer the coffee to them. Okay. And in my culture, uh, somebody like me who went to universities and a, a university teacher, you're not ex expected to say, I don't know, because you're expected to know almost everything and to give answers. Okay, so these were the things that I learned to do in other cultures. And not to do in my culture. Okay, just think about it because it's leading to, to an activity that we will um, work on together. Um, there was no day that I didn't, uh, no single day that I didn't hear the words mind the gap when I was in, in, in Britain, in London. Mind mm -hmm. the gap, like be careful of the gap. Of the gap. To me, it had a different interpretation. Okay. Can you please unmute Tiago? Unmute yourself, please. Okay. So, mind the gap to me meant be careful of the gap, the difference. Gap is difference between different cultures. And when I was sensitive and aware of the gap between different cultures, I learned how to increase my understanding and respect of other cultures because I, I was aware of the different differences between cultures. Mining the gap, the difference, seeing the difference and being aware of the difference between cultures taught me to see, um, to um, allowed me to integrate in cross-cultural communication um, uh, scenarios where I implemented and used the skills to reduce misunderstanding, 
I was aware of cultural differences. I acknowledge others' view, point of view. I got more opportunities to be employed. That's why I didn't only to work in my own culture. I got job offers uh, uh, to take outside of my culture because I could communicate with other cultures effectively. I had better leadership skills because I was um, uh, I uh, cultivated a global mindset in a way, relatively. Okay, so I I was offered leadership positions in my uh, place of work at Western Galilee College. That's why I'm the head of the English unit at the college, and I was quick at making decisions. N not only quick, but I could give better uh, decision making. Uh, uh, I, I was involved in better decision making processes as I got information and insight from different cultures. So in a way. Uh, mining the gap increased my adaptability, productivity, and teamwork skills. That's what that was about my experience. So when I'm, we're going to talk about yours, but one second. So working with other cultures meant to be, to assimilate in the other culture, or just have a mixture of it, different cultures. So I want to read this Gandhi quote, and that, that is something that I adapted as a way of life, as my own way of life, based on my experience. So I never reject uh, other cultures. I never look in a negative way at other cultures. I keep my eyes open, my mind and eyes open, and look at other cultures. Adapt what is what can go and align with my culture. And I question other things uh, in order to see whether I can um, integrate them in my life. So Gandhi said, I don't want my house to be walled in all sides and my windows to be stuffed. I wanted all cultures of all lands to be blown about my house, meaning that he wanted to see all other cultures. But I refused to be blown off my feet by any. So I wanted, so in a way, he kept his, the norms, safeguard the norms and keep the norms and stick to the basic norms or to the core norms of your own culture. And that's what I did. Like I was always uh, who I am, but I adapted different behaviors from other cultures. Just more. Ayman, can you please unmute your... Ayman, Ayman, we can hear you. Can you please? Okay. Now we, we're getting to activity number two. Culture in a box. Culture in this kind of activity requ uh, uh, entails that you share an object, and let me say a photo. You can go to your Google Photos, or your cell, um, uh, wherever, and you can bring an object now and share it with the others in this group. That object should represent custom or tradition that is typical for the holiday season or for your community. Explain the significance of this object to others. I'm going to uh, divide you into breakout rooms. And react to what others have just shared with you. So I'm going to be sending you to breakout rooms to present objects or photos or to talk about customs and traditions to, to others. Present them to other students uh, in this uh, session. Is this clear? Are the instructions clear? Yes. Do you have any questions? Yes. Before I send you to breakout rooms, you have questions. Okay. We need so to we show uh, the pictures to the breakout room. Yes. So I'm going to allow share screen. Because do we have share screen option? Yes. Okay. Now, and I'm going to divide you on to, into um, groups of five or even uh, um, 
Okay, so you can share objects. For that purpose, I'm going to give you a 20 minutes because you are going to be large groups. I want you to interact with each other. I want you to talk to each other. So I'm sending you now to break out rooms, okay? To talk, to present an object and to talk about your own culture, okay? Okay, uh, Costas, we need, I think, 15. Um, um, Fifteen groups. Okay. So here you go. You have twenty minutes for this activity. So please join the rooms and talk about your culture, about your customs by showing an object or a photo to your colleagues here. So that is the object that I brought. I forgot to show it. Ilad, do you know what this is? Yes. I don't know the name of it, but I know what it is. Okay. I want to tell you the lecture is amazing. You thank you. You connected people with so simple things, which was amazing. I have thank glasses. You. Wow. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, Ilad, thank you. And I owe you Ilad for the feedback you gave me in Kenya. What feedback did I you spoke about the same topic in Kenya and you gave me feedback. And I always use people's feedback to improve. So, so what is this, Ilad? This is know, something that was used in my wedding. Wedding. Can wedding? wedding. Can you guess how many people were invited to my wedding? No, I know. I thought it's a finjan or something. How many people were invited to your wedding, Ilad? Ah, to my wedding? Yes. Ah, no, not too many. 100. Okay. To mine, 1,000. How many? 1,000. Wow. Hmm. Okay, so this is, uh, you offer coffee. You offer coffee, you invite the entire village. Everybody is invited to that. There's no way that you don't, they will be offended if you don't invite them. Okay, so this is something I just keep it. Amazing. Okay, so here. Uh, so Ilana is here. Uh, is anybody, okay, we have students here. Why don't you join the room? Okay, let's, let's monitor the room, uh, breakout rooms here. Helen, will you please, uh, are you a teacher or a student? Can you please join the room you are assigned to? Okay, excuse me, time to visit. To make a visit to the students. So why not we share stuff about our cultures here as academics, as teachers? I, I think I think there is a culture of the scientist people, which is totally different from the humanities. 
Okay. Okay. I, I had a few things within reach of my desk that I can share. One, let's see, is an American baseball because I originally come from base America and baseball is the uh, favorite sport in the country. But then again, I also have what they call, this is a, it shows snow and, but it's a, uh, and it's also from a sports team, the New England Patriots, because I'm originally from Boston and I like to watch football. So uh, in America, sports are very much a part of their lives. And uh, I grew up with uh, a very sports minded uh, family. That's why when somebody said he was an athlete, I, I raised my hand because I just swam a kilometer before this meeting to be in the right frame of mind. And we bike uh, and, and things like that. So. Um, that's part of my personal culture, yeah. sports from America and uh, swimming and biking. <laughs> ah, nice. Interesting. Okay, others? Susan, do you want to share a photo or something? <laughs> well, okay, I don't have anything that, like, profound, but I do have the chocolate chip cookies. Um, I don't know why that's blurring it, because I have a back. No, we see it. Mm. Let's see. I'll get rid of the blur. There we go. So my mother is visiting. So I have a true artifact right here <laughs> from New Jersey. <laughs> and I'm I'm sure I cannot convince her to come say hello, but I'll... Your mother is in, in Italy now? Yes. Here, I'm going to show you. No, I have to say hello. 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 Oh, hello. Hi. 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 So that is my artifact from New Jersey. Well, and... I... Uh, I graduated Fairleigh Dickinson University from New Jersey in Rutgers. So, yes. Oh, really? Well, yeah, yeah. I grew up in Monmouth County, and that's where my family, uh, most of my family still is. And, but I uh, right now live in, um, I live in Italy. But this Florence. In Florence, Italy. That's oh. right. So right now, let's say I have this, which is um, typical a flavor of my childhood and, and and adulthood these chocolate chip cookies and we like very sweet cookies and um that for a lot of uh italian friends or european friends they think it's all it's too sweet but it tastes like home for me oh wow mm, yes with a special kind of sugar that we call brown sugar yeah yeah but i'm sorry i don't have anything more profound i might find something now yeah what I said wasn't very profound either, so that's okay. Yeah. Yes, but I connected with what you were saying, Rhonda. Yeah. Okay. I come from a family that loves sports and watches sports as well, and that's why I left. And you went uh, to school. No, I'm just kidding. I did. I went to university in Boston. I went to Boston College. Okay, so I'm originally from Boston. See, there's this, in America, wow. there's a culture. People from Massachusetts go down to New York and New Jersey for college, and people from New York and New Jersey come up to Massachusetts. So that's a it's a two way migration of youth. Um, right. you're, you're far from home, but you're close enough to jump home for a weekend. So you, it's a way of getting your independence. That's very typical. Absolutely. Nice. So you have things in common. Not only this course and not only impact. Mm -hmm. Much more than that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Ilad, is there anything that you want to share? Uh, <laughs> all my room is full of things. I don't know. I think the only one thing I want here to show, it was just broken. I don't know how it is called in English. From the sea, of course. It's a part of uh, something from the sea. How is Rhonda will know. She's a native speaker. Rhonda? Like a porcupine? Do you know how... how... So something we can't from the hear sea. you, Rhonda. I love the sea and, and, and I enjoy it very much. And uh, Hania has, I think, the best sea I have been ever. In Slovenia, uh, we would uh, for... uh, translate this into the sea eagle. It is a black and has. Yes. Uh, aren't they just called porcupine? They, 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 if you step on it, it's yeah. very, it hurts <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so uh, whoever of you loves the sea and uh, wants to meet me at 7 a.m. in the morning before the lectures, uh, I'll be there. Uh, Swimming you know. or, or surfing? Swimming. 
sunrise to see the sunrise. I remember we've done which that. sea is what which sea is it? In um Khania? It's the Mediterranean. Okay, no, no, I, I go to Sadat Yam, so I was uh ah, no, you have the best one in Israel. Sadat Yam is very nice. No, but Khani is better. Okay, thank you. Good in this thing. Titiana, do you have something to share with us about your <laughs> Sasha, maybe? Tatiana, you, 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 yeah, something you, yeah. You, you had the lecture last time, right? Me? Not... Anna, Anna. I was Anna. Uh -huh. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, sorry, I was muted. Um, so I am in the lecture room with some of my students. Uh, it's a big room, so we went to different corners. Um, mm. I really do not have anything that would be really Slovenian culture, uh, but uh, uh, I can only show the personal culture. <laughs> uh, um, uh, I prefer uh, to 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 have uh, uh, something around my neck, so it would be my kind of uh, 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 personal culture in the sense how I dress myself, and it's in blue, and this is also my color. So this is the only what what I can. Uh, uh, share with you about the culture because I do not have anything else appropriate uh, uh, around me. Okay, maybe maybe a photo something. I mean, maybe it's just still about it. You, you don't need to bring an object. I mean, uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, actually, I could try... Um, it was just the Easter and... Uh, oh, we have a special cake called putitsa. Uh, maybe Sasha will be faster as I will be uh, to find some photo. Uh, it is with uh, uh, walnuts. Uh, it must be bacon in a special uh, uh, pot. Uh, it is a kind of protected, and if it's done otherwise, then it's not really like uh, uh, a culture part uh, of that. Um, so I will try to put this into the chat, the photo. So food is a, plays a dominant role in our cultures. You see, Susan? So, yeah. It yeah. is it is sweet, uh, but it could be filled also with something what is salted. Uh, uh, they they are different parts, and uh, uh, the the pot in which it's bacon, uh, it uh, must be made from. Uh, oh my goodness! I'm looking for. Uh, uh, the... Did you send it in the chat? Uh, did yes. you send the photo? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Um, okay, here. Uh, it is made from. Ah, uh, okay. I think we have something similar. Uh, we we borrow from each other. We, yeah, food. Like in Israel, it's a mixture of different cultures, and uh, one of uh, like it, it's a privilege. To live between different cultures, because during like I take advantage of all holidays, Ilad. So whenever there is a Jewish holiday, I would taste the Jewish food, and when there is a Christian holiday, I'll taste the the Christian uh, cookies and food, and I celebrate the Muslim um, uh, holidays. And uh, by the way, um, yeah. I cannot talk about food today. You know why? I to, yes, I want. I want. Yeah, first of all, you you can announce it here. No, not everybody knows. I, can I say, I cannot talk about food today since I'm fasting. It's Ramadan. I observe Ramadan and I fast, but it's fine. I mean, to me, it's fine that people are eating, enjoying food. I, I, I lived in different cultures, so I'm used to it. I mean, I never uh, feel it's, any kind of yeah. discomfort 
when somebody's sitting in, to, next to me and eating, even when I'm fasting, I'm just used to it. It's Sonia, like, yes. I think one of the nice things uh, I saw even when we met last time is that you know to find the common between people and not the first thing to do is look for the difference. And we have so much in common and I wish uh, we had more of you to copy you. Yeah. yeah. I, That's I, how I, I found I, my husband, uh, Ilad. <laughs> <laughs> we need to replicate you. That's right. We have to clone her. Clone. We have a bunch of scientists here. Exactly. So we can clone her. One by one. I, I was I was in a meeting. I'm part of the um the 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 senior committee in my college. So we were meeting, and everybody was eating. They didn't notice because I think we were two Arabs, and the rest were Jews. And they were eating. They didn't notice, and they, they put the food in front of me because the one sitting on the left wanted to share with the one sitting on the right. And I just passed the food from one to another, and I said, "Take, taste this, and take this," and they didn't notice. And then I said, do you know that I'm fasting? And they said, wow, why? Sorry, sorry. Um, we're sorry. We didn't pay attention. I said, you don't need to, to be sorry. You're Jewish. You're not a Muslim. You don't fast. So no, you can I eat think, now. I think <laughs> part of the multiculture uh, uh, that we need to know each other. And, and I'm uh, I'm looking every morning at the moon. And I know that you have something like, uh, as, as a Costa say, five yes. minutes. <laughs> okay. And I five think... days until the end of Ramadan or six days or something like this. Yeah, yeah. It's already um, eighteen minutes, so we have another two minutes for the students to come back. I'll be I'll be curious to hear what they had yeah. to say. Yeah, my mother was always um, uh, my mother was always um, yelling at me because I used to say, "When do we eat this fruit?" When did it, she said, Samia, you finished your PhD and you don't know. Never say you don't know in the front of others. Oh, that's interesting. I, yeah. I, um, I was not expected to say I don't know. And some pe sometimes people would laugh at you because uh, you're expected to know and you give answers. Samia? Interesting. Yes. Did you get married after your PhD or before? Luckily before. That's why I survived it. <laughs> It's very hard, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy. And with my students, just to change their mindset about interculture. I integrate interculturalism in every course. <laughs> we talk about cultures. and uh, It goes with every course, soft skills, because in every course, they need to communicate. So I, I add these ideas, and I uh, discuss these ideas with my students. It's good. Something... Uh, that we need uh, to integrate. Uh, um, uh, I see some of the students. Well, Tim, did you have have you finished with your ah? So everybody's back. Okay, thank you. I, I think you can. Welcome stop back. Talking. Welcome back, everybody. Well, Tim, I see your smile on your face. How was it? It was really great. Got to know ah. some people. Really yeah. good. Have you? Yarin, have you enjoyed this activity? Yes, very much. Ah, uh, great. So you can continue. You can, uh, um, okay, one second. Uh, we can continue some time, but uh, the, my goal was here to continue the session we started uh, from last time. So now, okay, is everybody back? Okay, let's see if everybody's back. Is everybody back? Almost. Kostas, is everybody back? Because I don't see. Okay, yes, we're doing well. Okay, now it's time to use mirrors and windows. We're going to use a method that I call, that is called mirrors and windows. You see, you say, Ali, can you please uh, mute yourself? Okay, thank you. Mirrors and windows. You look at yourself, because I want to hear you from you, and then I would add my insights into this this kind of activity. You look at yourself because, as you were telling others about your culture, I guess you're worried about how you others would see your culture, how we, you will be viewed in the eyes of others. Windows mean like looking at other, like seeing others. So I want you to reflect on this activity. Uh, by relating to one of the questions here, 
or even beyond these questions more? Did the activity reveal universal similarities? How did you react when you learn about something that was different from your? What, how did you react when something didn't make sense? I mean, somebody said something and it doesn't make sense. How did you react? To you, it doesn't make sense. Because to me, everything makes sense. Okay. How did you learning, how did learning about other cultures change your feeling about your own culture? And how did this exchange influence your views on cultural differences and future interactions? The floor is yours. I want to hear from you. Students, please. Alone? Uh, yes, uh, so um, I noticed uh, in my in our group, uh, everyone uh, choose uh, things that are uh, food or uh, beverages. And so that was a similarity across uh, all cultures. But I think uh, we all like uh, good food and drinks um, and uh, each uh, shared uh, some unique uh, food or drink from uh, their culture. So it was uh, nice to see it. Good. So we, we share things in common. Hello, right, Tim. Thank I you. I like the most about that, that I dis discovered that every culture, besides having uh, some different things, everybody in this culture sees the best thing in this culture by his personal beliefs. Like someone who really likes food would take the food part of his culture. And someone who's really like archaeology, I had the word, um, would choose something that uh, from the past. And maybe someone would take some celebrations and will everyone mm -hmm. would took some other things. Uh, so you wanna, in a way, you're saying is that everybody wanted others to think that his own culture was the best. No, you, no. no, not like that. Most. Uh, sorry for wanted... misunderstanding you. No, so that's okay. That's please okay. correct me. It's mm. more about like everyone take a thing from his culture by his favorite thing. Everyone have a lot of thing on his culture that's a very different in the same culture. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Yarin, thank you, Rotem. Yes, thank you. Um, what them took my uh, my thing I wanted to say, but uh, I will try. Uh, uh, I will turn the. I will try something else. Um, I think that the, the the very the very special thing about uh, about cultures in general uh, are the are the time they they were all together. So uh, like the time they are eating uh, the, the traditional uh, meals uh, or the time they share together during holidays. Um, and it's really like me think, like me, uh, thinking uh, that uh, we are all the same. We are kind of all the same. All of us uh, the same, uh, just born in uh, different, uh, different uh, places and, uh, uh, and see different cultures, but uh, Eventually, we all uh, do the same thing, just a different thing. But we, mm. we share this is uh, we share the holiday together as a family or uh, or friends, and we eat uh, traditional food, um, and that's it. Good. So, in spite of differences, we have so many things in common. We we yes. we can always look for similarities. Interesting, Gary. Yarin, when do you have your main family uh, meal? And your... Excuse me? You, you said you have a family meals, like when you celebrate meals with yes. families. Yes. I guess it's Friday, right? Friday. Um, typically Friday, but uh, in, the, in, the, in the latest months, we are doing it uh, about uh, two and, or three times a week uh, to, be, to be close and to, to be... Uh, to share uh, experience or, or a new thing that, that happened to us. So it's, yeah. it's very bonding. Yeah, and this is something universal. Like, this is something that many cultures share. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Yarin. Okay, you. I, I'll take another one, too. Can you please Helping share? what Yarin said. Uh, uh, Tamar, thank you. We, thought we talked about hobbies because we had time. 
and most of us said that we like dancing and i think that that's something that we found uh, like all of us like to do so we decided if we meet in greece then we're gonna do it all together which i thought that was very nice yeah, Kos says here we have an idea for the International Week. <laughs> they want to dance together. Good. Okay, we, we'll think about it. Okay, so we have Stanis Lode. Did I pronounce uh, your name it, right? Yes, okay. yes that's right. Uh, so uh, in our group, every person was of different faith. And so so it was like a really interesting, uh, it was really interesting conversation. And we focused mainly on the topic of the holidays in our cultures and countries, mainly because the Catholic Easter has just came to an end. And we, we talked a lot about our holidays. Uh, and uh, yeah, and for me, it was uh, very interesting and like valuable to hear about other cultures, habits and uh, and, uh, and and holiday rituals. Uh, but but the one thing that is like uh, mutual for all of all of our cultures is is that the the holidays are the time of 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 the are the time that be, is being spent with family and also the time of. Uh, um, giving giving help and and making good deeds towards others and it was prevalent in all of our cultures in catholicism in the orthodox culture in in judaism and also in the muslim culture so it's 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 one thing that really binds us together i would say good interesting so we have times we have common uh, grounds uh saleh did you raise your hand? I, I guess Saleh raised his uh, hand. Yeah, you know, they, they all said the same thing. You know, they said what I want to say, but you know, I'm going to add. A, we we all shared, a, almost all of us shared a dish, like our favorite dish, which led me to think <laughs> if we, you know, if we got chosen to go to, if we got chosen to meet in uh, Greece. So, you know, everyone would bring something from their culture to eat for us because, you know, food is <laughs> important. <laughs> we need and, to choose it, right? Uh, exactly, but you know, like like they said, all of the the differences we have a lot of sim sim similarities, and that's it. Yeah, when we when we meet, we think about the similarities. And what about the differences? That's what I'm missing here. Like everybody talked, we focused on the similarity. Maybe this is something natural that would happen happen to all of us when we need something, someone from another culture. We look for similarities, and we don't focus on the differences. Okay, so that is uh, what you chose to do, which is there's nothing wrong or right in that case. Everything is acceptable as long as you're content with what you're doing, as long as uh, you're, uh, uh, you, you're, you're not rude and like to anybody and you accept other values and cultures as they are. That's the idea. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry for, yes. Aviv, Aviv, you will be the last one because we will have time for another interesting oh, idea. Never mind, so never mind. No, no, Aviv, Aviv go, go ahead. I just wanted uh, to uh, to add to what you said that I think uh, it's human nature to search for what is common and uh, what is uncommon is more like a thing we experience uh, by being in in uh, in different places and uh, meeting other people and we encounter those uncommon things and those differences, but uh, in our human nature, we will search first and foremost for what is common, you know, uh, between us. Yes. Okay, <laughs> Aviv, you're right. Yeah, I agree with you. At least this is what I feel based on my personal experience. Um, just think about one thing. Thank you everybody for your insight, your input. I, I just want you to think about something about the need when we meet somebody different, but I don't have time to discuss it, just think about it, about it. Do we sometimes feel the need to justify our difference? Justify the fact that we are different. Sometimes when, when you just do something differently or you eat a different food or you celebrate a different um, uh, uh, holiday, then people, others would ask you why. And it puts, people sometimes in a defensive manner. That's an, an issue that that I can di discuss in another session, not this one, but it's related somehow. Okay, so Meryl and Wendell, look at this yourself and look at that. Yes. Uh... yes, yeah, we, we, we I, I can maybe integrate it. So 
here is an idea about when we we talk about in in intercultural uh, communication encounters there is also the 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 thing about uh, stereotypes so we want to refrain from stereotypes we want to suspend myth judgments stereotype is an idea that a generalization about another social group prejudice it is, is related to attitudes to, toward other. Our attitude here is like for if, if my idea is people with pink hair are mean, then my attitude or my my feeling is I don't like um, people with pink hair. And then there is a discrimination which determines and tells that our behaviors and actions will be different. So if your idea and attitude is that you have a negative idea about uh, uh, about people with pink hair, then your action would be, I'm not going to let anyone with pink hair sit next to me. So just be careful just um, that uh, of uh, prejudice, stereotypes, and, of, um, and discrimination. That's an idea that I think Anna spoke about it last week about culture iceberg, and I presented this. So there are things that we see above the surface, but there are a lot of things you don't know about the other, okay? So be careful of initial observations, first impression, okay? And face value, how you judge others. Give it time. Don't uh, be quick at judging others. And don't you judge others because if you, um, um, th there was one quote: "If you judge others, you don't have time to, to, to love them." Okay, and look at people with their, with intercultural glasses. When you use your cultural glasses, you see things the way you want to see them, from your uh, perspective. But when you look about other cultures, use an intercultural glasses, meaning see different things from different perspective, from different sides. Um, okay, so I teach at the Western Galilee College. So in this place, we learned how to look at other cultures and integrate other different cultures in different activities. So this is one marathon. In this marathon, we promote ideas. We try to promote ideas um, uh, of respect, mutual respect, understanding, collaboration between different people from different cultures. So this event is held in my college every year. That is when celebrate. I teach in the Western Galilee College, half of the population is Arabs, the other half are Jews, but everybody celebrates Christmas, okay? So we're here, Muslim, Jews, Druze, everybody celebrating Christmas, okay? This is Ramadan, like celebrating Ramadan. Half of the population are um, Jews and uh, the half Arabs again. So we celebrate, we make sure to celebrate Ramadan because we want to show the other that we acknowledge, we we see them, we, we okay, this is celebrating Ramadan. You see here are, I, 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 I can recognize faces here. So there are Jews, Muslims, Christians, everybody's here celebrating breaking fast. So these kind of activities and events at the institution level, and it's a, a, and it's it's your choice to decide to attend these events, will promote your understanding to intercultural uh, communication, and eventually it will promote and boost your um, develop your intercultural uh, competence. Okay, we belong to different cultures. But these cultures have similar things. So it depends on what we focus on, what you decide to focus on. We, we, if, like, but if we decide to focus on the similarity, like Aviv, Aviv said, which is part of our nature, then we will we'll, we'll, we'll do that and we will see more similarity than differences. Okay, we spoke about this time, so I'm... Oh. Now, um, this is taking us to the third part of my session. Remember, we started with who do you belong to, the different circles, and then you introduce your cultures to each other. And now we want to analyze 
incidents, incidents like experiences. Critical here does not mean um, critical doesn't doesn't mean negative only negative incidents. It means like analyzing uh, ideas uh, or incidents that lead to misunderstanding. This is the idea. Reflecting, meaning we're going to use the mirror and window reflection to look at ourselves and to look about the other in order to reflect on critical incidents. Critical incidents are unexpected events. You talk to somebody from another culture, okay? There is an interaction between people from different backgrounds, but the result is misunderstanding or conflict due to cultural differences. We want to reflect on we, meaning you, you students, everybody here in this uh, group. I want you to, to have uh, offer you the chance to reflect on critical incidents. The goal, the, the, I, I will start with the purpose of this activity. The purpose of this activity, reflecting on critical incidents, is to boost your intercultural awareness Awareness of differences, similarities, feelings, emotions of other cultures. Awareness to other views. Okay? Awareness to other beliefs. And this kind of activity is aimed to facilitate learning about different cultures. Okay, here we go. One second. I, I will share some tools before I uh, um, send you to work together. In order to uh, reflect on scenarios, critical uh, scenarios, critical incidents, um, you use mainly, you're expected to use ma mainly three soft skills. Three skills, let's say. The first one is self-awareness. That you are aware of, self-awareness is something you learn. So the more you practice reflection, the more you become self-aware of your actions, your behaviors, and attitudes. So it's learnable skill, which enhances understanding of your emotions. Um, impact on your thinking and, okay, I, I don't see it all. One second. Okay. And social exchanges. You, by, by raising your self-awareness, you can identify your abilities, you can accept your weaknesses. Sometimes you, you, after an incident, you feel that you were so weak. You recognize your strength and you recognize your biases if you were biased. If you took one side and it, it, it neglected the other, one second. Critical thinking, asking questions, examining questions. Okay, the ability to reflect and think in a fair, unbiased, and logical way. Okay, empathy, meaning put yourself in another person's shoe. Experience the situation as someone else. These skills will help you become proactive and reactive. Reactive, react to incidents in the future. And proactive, like be prepared for uh, intercultural misunderstanding that might happen in the future. We're gonna follow G GAP's reflective cycle. This is uh, based on uh, is, um, uh, this source. Okay, so these are the source LPS below. So there are seven stages in this reflective cycle. It begins with not be judged. Others, not to add interpretation, but describe what happened. You were part of intercultural misunderstanding, so you ask what happened. And then you describe your feelings, emotions. How did it feel? Or maybe how did the other feel? What worked? What didn't work? What worked? What didn't work? Why did it happen? What was missing? What I have learned? And then, what will you do differently next time? So first you begin by looking, evaluating, analyzing what happened, and drawing conclusions. Okay, 
to make the task easier for you, the activity easier. One second. Just a minute, Samia. Yes. Can you go back to this diagram. Yes. You mean that the first thing that you do is analyzing the emotion and just then analyzing what really happened? Why did it happen? First, first you did, this is the first stage here. The what happened? Yes. And then how did you feel? How did somebody else feel? Okay. And then you go into evaluation and analysis, trying to, to look at every the broader context of this uh, incident, providing but more details about the incident. And where do you look from the other perspective here in the analysis? In analysis, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, starting from the evaluation, you start uh, uh, connecting the dots and filling the, in the missing information, providing the, the wider context of the incident, looking at the intervening factors and other factors, not just you and the other, but talking about other things that affected what happened and the results of what happened. Okay, in order to make this task easier, okay, I just added the questions based on this model. I, uh, okay, uh, here, that might be clear a lot. So in the first stage, you ask what happened, who, when, and where, without judgment. You don't judge others. You don't express your opinion on what happened. You don't reflect. And then, how did you feel? What were you thinking? It's a descriptive process here. And then you evaluate. Evaluation meaning you say what was good, what was bad, what was the disappointing, frustration, thought provoking. Uh, analysis. Why you stuck with this incident? Why do you want to talk about it? Why did it, you don't want to let it go? Do you think that others experience a similar situation? Will others react the same way you reacted? And why and why not? How do you feel about it now? After it ended. General inclusion, generalization, like in a research, you have a general conclusion. But so specific conclusion, uh, connects to you, like your own conclusions. What can you conclude regarding your specific behavior, behave, and reactions? What you need to do, an action plan in the future. What would you do differently? What skills do you need to develop, and how you're gonna do it? This is the process that I want to engage students in now, and this is based on this source. One second. And let's remind you that sometimes you need mediation. What is a mediation? Mediation, I'm, I'm back to um, personalized learning now. Mediation is someone like another person. You take a third person perspective. Let, let me read it, a definition, and then I'll get to that. Me, one, one second. Mediation misunderstanding means you adapt the role of intercultural mediator. Um, uh, someone like another, like you, another person. Uh, one second, no, one second. Okay, or a tool like ChatGPT or uh, chatbot that will help you understand what happened. Okay, you can use chat, communicate, chat with ChatGPT to consult about incident that happened. You can write, uh, you create chat bot for intercultural communication, which will give you um, uh, feedback on what happened and help you analyze the incident in order um, to enhance effective and appropriate communication and understanding between uh, people from different cultures, background, who adjustment, adaptability, and the use of appropriate language and reaction. Okay, so we need, sometimes you're gonna use another, somebody, sometimes 
you experience a misunderstanding, you feel you felt hurt, you felt um, stressed. Uh, there was a confrontation, uh, some something that affected the reasoning, something that created boundary, unhealthy, uh, Susan, unhealthy boundary between you and the other. Um, um, you overgeneralized, uh, you were disappointed. So you, you will share this with somebody else and that somebody else we will call a mediator. And sometimes you will be the mediator of the incident by taking an external and a third perspective on yourself. What do I mean by this? I mean that you look at the incident as from the outside, okay? As if you were not part of this incident. You're trying to see the entire picture, the big picture, everybody, all the, everybody involved in this um, uh, uh, in, in misunderstanding. We're going to unpack critical scenarios. And I, for this task, I'm going to send you to breakout rooms, okay? Where I'm going to share here critical incidents with you, okay? I'm going to send you, first of all, the link. So let me start with sending the link to you before I send you to breakout rooms. Okay, here. Just to check that you have access to the link and that you have received it. Have you received it? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. Good. So I'm, again, you're going to meet in rooms. And your task is to imagine your immediator. Imagine you're someone else from a different culture. Describe the situation. Explore your feelings and the beliefs and assumptions of everyone involved. Discuss what was, was learned and where misunderstanding arose. Share what felt right and wrong or wrong to you. Come up with ways to resolve any confusion. Lastly, take turns acting out how you would mediate and improve understanding. Is this task clear? This is what you going. I'm going to divide you into breakout rooms. You have a pool of 25 critical scenarios, critical incidents, reflecting negative, no, not negative, um, misunderstanding between people from different cultures. I'm going to send you to breakout rooms to analyze these uh, scenarios. You don't have time for the, them all. So I want you to randomly focus on a three or even more, two or more, let's say two. Four, again, we have, uh, again, we have a uh, 15 minutes to discuss this in the breakout rooms. Is the task clear? No. <laughs> can, no. Can, you, can you like explain it a little bit more? Yeah. Like we're supposed can to go into rooms and like we have, yes. We're supposed to have everyone, like each, each and everyone is supposed to pick three or four, like uh, two to uh, three okay, scenarios. Three. What, what are we supposed are to scenarios. do? Like read it and what? Read it and then the instructions are in the second slide. You have the instructions here. Okay. Imagine you are someone from a different culture. Uh, as if this is how you're part, you were part of this scenario or your your mediator like you you were a witness to something like this mm -hmm. and you want to mediate mediate meaning you try to find a solution you come up with tips with advice on how to to resolve this but first you have to feel it and then you have to see to uh, identify the beliefs and assumptions of everybody involved how did everybody feel? What happened? How did they feel? How Do did they react? Somewhere? No, you discuss it. It's a discussion. Okay. Are the instructions clear? Uh, yeah. 
put yourself yeah. it's either puts yourself in somebody else's shoe you're one of the people in this incident or you take an external position stance like you you try to mediate you try to find a solution you try to to see it from the outside and reflect on what happened is that clear somehow yeah yeah yes. i'm sending you to break out rooms you have 15 minutes to discuss two three or even more incidents okay so here we are um i think we have fifth we need 15 rooms ah okay so you had you received an invitation i think it cost us okay here okay 15 rooms here please join the room and have fruitful discussion about why critical scenario uh, incidents don't work what is missing Okay, you have all um, instructions in the file. So it's a way to navigate critical incidents. You have 15 minutes, uh, and this will leave me with, okay, 20 minutes toward the end. Okay. Even more. Students, can you please join the um, the breakout rooms you were assigned to join? Student, do we have students here? Natalie? I didn't get a room to join. Okay, so I assign you. Uh-huh. Oh, Let's talk about. Have you added her? I think you, 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 yeah, okay, good. Um, Talen, can you please, um, uh, because we, we, I want to have a discussion between the academics here about our critical incidents, and I will be sharing mine. <laughs> Just think about your critical incident. So Elena, Ivana, if you are a student, please join the students in the breakout rooms. If you're one of the teachers in this course or in the impact, please stay here. Some, um... So, okay. Do you want to start or do you want me to start? So I'm, I'm having this discussion with you, like mm -hmm. the teachers. Uh, about critical incident. Critical doesn't necessarily mean negative, okay? It means that um, uh, there was a misunderstanding. Like it, it created Susan unhealthy boundaries. Mm -hmm. Did, like there were boundaries that feel healthy, but mm -hmm. these are unhealthy boundaries, okay? You, you don't feel, you feel disappointed or you mm -hmm. feel distressed and anxiety and um, you couldn't sleep the same night. Okay, mm. I'll, I'll tell you an incident. So there was this incident that, okay, let me choose. I have many. Okay, let me let me choose one. So there was uh, this incident that um, I, part of my job, I'm the head of the English unit, and I'm defined as a leader. Okay, I lead a team. Okay, but I believe in te team teamwork. So I, uh, I would consult with my team. I always consult with my team and uh, many of my staff members, I have 25 staff members like in, in my team leading the English department would uh, perceive this as a sign of weakness. Well, I see it as a sign of strength. Um, and people would say, why don't you make a decision? Why don't you make the decision? And I say, I'm asking you because I want to see if you'd think differently. And, uh, but there were people like who are not like me who would make a decision, come to the team and just share the decision. I'm not like that. Okay. There was very unpleasant incident about leadership that I encountered in my uh, job. There was uh, this incident when I 
had this discussion with my team, a group of, not everybody. I chose a group like it was years ago. And those teachers don't teach in the college anymore. So there was an incident that I was discussing something with my team. And then I needed to, a decision has to be made, right? You cannot come like it's, uh, you cannot come up with different decisions if you're deciding with the same thing. It's either sometimes, it's either you give a bonus to students or you don't. It's a decision you make, but you want to hear different opinions from others. So I would take the decision and I would come to the rest of the team. And I said, I consulted with my team and I made this decision. And one of my staff members didn't like this. She thought that uh, that it's unacceptable. If I consult with them, then I should take their ideas. So this is the my scenarios. These are my critical incidents. Do and you want to were, put yourself in my shoe, Susan? <laughs> and they were cultural incidents. It was a cultural difference. Um, it, it's like, yeah, the good question, because it might be personal uh, differences, right? And it might be, might not be personal because in some cultures, as a leader, you are expected to make all the decisions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's cultural some somehow. Words, some cultures that you said? You are expected to make all the decisions. Yes. So it's well, to make a decision. Mm-hmm. There are some, as a leader, as a leader, if it's um, if you know, if it's a culture with more hierarchy, yes, and then the cultures that, like you were showing in um, Hofstede's um model, and uh, where you know you have um certain people who in certain cultures that are more egalitarian, and so you're not going to have the one person that makes all the decisions without consulting first they would consult with the team and it's more democratic mm. but it's more time consuming right? yes energy yeah uh -huh. confusing yeah you keep thinking about it Sanya I would ask you why is it so important to you to to consult with them it's very easy to decide the decision and continue on but you have a reason yeah, but you need to consult with others in, in order to see different point of view and to see how how they think about issues. Um, I mean, I have my expertise, I have my professionalism, but it doesn't mean that I, I, um, I have the same experience that somebody else. Maybe their experience will add something else that I didn't think about. So why not? I, I must say, Elad, that consulting with others is not that acceptable in my culture. I, I mean, you have to act as like, you should know things and make a decision and be strong enough to make a decision on your own. I don't see it that way. Because I'm asking it because sometimes people don't want to take decision because in this way they don't need to to pay the price of the of of whatever the decision is, or they don't need, want to think. And I think when you explain why is it so important to you, no. But if it's something very hierarchical, because we come from different cultures, that's another point. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no. That's no. another point because everybody would see leadership in. Uh, uh, in a different way. Like the staff members are from different cultures. We come from different origins. So it's important to cater and just give the, the give everybody his or her place to, 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 to say what they think. Other opinions matter. This is what I think. Matter doesn't mean that I should adapt them but it means that I should listen to them. Now, if we go on this model of you, what do we need to do now? Sure, our, yeah, what we- First thing, first thing was the description. We did it, then the emotion. I discussed. Okay, it's just, it's, we, we evaluate it. Okay, let's go to the model. You want to see it, okay? If there is a model, I want to learn it, you know? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I suggest it's easier to look at the questions that I that stemmed out of the model. Okay, where's the key here? So these are the questions, or would you prefer? Okay, here. So I described what happened. Then I said how I felt. Okay. And then what was good, disappointing, that they, they didn't see it my way, like we had different ways of looking at this. Analyze what did you choose this incident? It's critical for me for my job. Have you experienced similar situations? I don't know. Have you experienced similar situations, Ilad? 